Hey kids, John here. Wanted to talk about studio work and the recording process. Let's start with the basics. Where's the gig? Where are you supposed to be? What's the name of the studio? Who's the contractor? What's the name of the group you're playing with? And at large studios, you might want to know what studio either number or letter you're playing in. That's a good thing to know so that way you know where you're going. You want to be warmed up and ready and you don't want to be blown out from either the night before or from playing a lot that day. If the gig is taxing and it's important to you to do a great job, consider moving some things around on your calendar if you're worried about being torn up going into the recording. As you become more comfortable with recording and people asking you to do recordings, chances are you can figure out how to adjust your calendar accordingly. But make sure you get there early, you're warmed up, you're ready to go, and you bring your A game. Studio time is very expensive. Producers and contractors know this, and they want to have the player be able to lay down the tracks as easily as possible. This means you need to be comfortable. Now, the other thing is equipment. What should you bring? If it's a small studio, you may actually need to bring a few things, like a music stand and some headphones. That's a possibility. But in large studios, large professional studios, the contractors probably already worked it out with the studio. And they've got all the headphones and they've got all the music stands and stand lights, everything that they would need to do the recording except for you. Now, other equipment items. What trumpets do you need to bring? You need to find this stuff out. Make sure you ask questions. And you might want to carry extra stuff. If it's a classical recording, I would bring the kitchen sink and at least have it somewhere on standby if it makes your job easier and if they maybe want to change a requirement to a piccolo trumpet as opposed to maybe B flat. Now, mutes. The other thing is even if there's no mutes called on it, you might want to have some mutes handy because a producer might say, you know, that would be really cool if that part was on Harmon mute. So you might want to be able to give them that option. And if you do, they're going to say, man, this guy's really repair prepared. He's very professional. And they might just call you back, which is always a good thing in the studio because playing in the studio is fun. And typically it pays pretty good. Now, another thing about being prepared is, oddly enough, your environment. It's nice and cool here in the control room at Studio A at Fantasy Studios in Berkeley. But where we're recording in another studio, it's it's kind of cool. And it's a, it's on the verge of being comfortable for just a t-shirt. So I've got a t-shirt and a shirt on. A very stylish shirt at that. And then I also have a jacket option in case it gets colder in there. So be prepared to be very comfortable. You want to wear tannis shoes that don't make a lot of noise or soft shoulder soft sold shoes so you're not stomping on the ground and and adding extra percussion to a recording that doesn't ask for it so be very comfortable wear comfortable clothes and have options to wear another thing that we must consider is how long is the session and you kind of want to clear a block before it and some time after it so that you can be available to them to do a little bit of extra time in case the recording goes a little long because they may need it to finish the project. There's nothing worse than being almost done with the project and not being able to finish it that day and having to find another day when you can get the studio time and you can get the players together. So flexibility. Be a little bit flexible with that. So if the days are long, the recording times that we're doing is we're doing five days this week and we're supposed to start playing at 10 and the date ends at 8. So we're here for 10 hours. I brought food with me. You want to make sure you're comfortable. Being comfortable is very key to staying relaxed in the recording process and you definitely want to be relaxed. So bringing food so you can sustain your energy level and don't go into a low blood sugar situation where you start to lose energy and concentration. Don't make that mistake. You may not have time to go get food. So bring food with you. And we're going to take a look at that right now. This session is a five-day session. And it's arrive at 9. That's the call time. You arrive at 9 and we leave at 8. We may leave earlier, but we're going to be here a long time. 
No matter what you're scheduled for, if it's three or four hours, you might want to bring a couple of snacks. And because I'm here all day, I've decided to pack some stuff. I got some, I got some carrot juice, got some chili, got an apple, got some soy milk. I've got some tuna. Oh, this is salmon, smoked salmon. I've got some yogurt. I've got some applesauce. I've got a pot pie and a protein drink and a yummy TV dinner. So you might want to pack some stuff because potentially you're going to get hungry and you may not have a lot of time to go grab stuff. They may say, yeah, take 15 minutes, go out, make sure you're fueled up and you're good to go. I wouldn't just eat a bunch of Oreos in between takes because that may not be the healthiest thing for you. If you insist on taking little snacks so that you've got little things to eat, I wouldn't buy the Oreo pack. I'd get something like a good protein bar and pack that. So think about the food that you may need at the session. Here we are in the main room that we're recording in today. And you can see we're out on a break doing a big band album but this is how they have the room set up. And if you're in the trumpet section, you're all the way back here behind this wall. And this is where we're set up. So one of the things you're gonna deal with inside the studio is you've gotta get set up with the microphone placement. The engineer's gonna come in and help you. Typically, it's just a few inches off your bell, and then you're gonna have to read your music stand as well. Now, one of probably the most difficult issues that we we basically face in the studio is headphones. I'm using a set of headphones that are mine. These are my personal headphones. I checked with the engineer to see if they're okay and they're basically an open air headphone as opposed to the closed ear headphone that the other guys are using that were provided by the studio. When you're wearing the closed ear typically what's happening is you're going one ear on and one ear off like this so you can hear the rhythm section and you can hear other sections and then you can hear yourself playing live in the studio because you got an ear off. For me, I like the open air. The engineer may say, no, I don't want to have that because of bleed, so always ask if it's cool to use them, which I checked and he said it should be fine, no problems. So I still go with an ear on and an ear slightly off, but with these, I can still get a little bit in my right ear and still hear myself. Now, one of the cool things is this studio has separate controls for all of our headphones. So when I plug in and make sure you don't have the eighth inch, I believe this is, and this is a quarter inch. So you don't want a mini headphone jack. You always want to have a quarter jack because that's what you're going to plug into. But what I can do here is I can adjust separate volumes for things. And the reason for that is because the bones and saxes are in the room but as you can see out here, we're behind a wall. And so this wall here makes it a little bit more difficult to hear the other horns in the room. So I've got adjustments here for the bones and the saxes. I have a separate adjustment for the drums. He's in an isolation booth and so is the bass. The piano's in the same room, but they've got the piano padded heavily. So I can make my individual adjustments and then I can make my overall volume adjustment. So on different tunes, you may adjust it differently. But this is the challenge, is to be able to play along with the guys you're playing with in the room and people that are in isolation booths. Another challenge we have is playing straight at the mic. You've got to be able to read your music and hold your bell basically in the same general area. Because the problem is if you start moving your bell, you're not playing at your mic anymore and they lose signal and your sound in the studio starts to disappear and it makes it difficult for the engineer and producer. So you've got to play straight at the mic. You need to play into the mic and not move around. Another little challenge is being able to see your music and being able to get what you need and get the music out of the way quietly so you're not making a lot of noise when you're making page turns. You don't need to be doing this kind of stuff when it's a flute passage. As you can see, the piano is damped. They have, they have the whole thing covered. They've got it up so they can get microphones in it, but they have it covered. You can still hear it in the room, 
but it's cut off so that most of our sound is not getting into the piano. They try and separate these things. So the bass player's in his own room, so that one he's playing. You don't hear him that much, so you're not going to be able to check out what he's playing unless you have him in the headphones. And then the drummer, he as well, is tucked into his own isolation booth. So again, you're going to need to have the headphones to be able to hear the drummer and the bass player, which are very important to be able to check out harmonically, rhythmically. You're going to need to deal with headphones. So before the session, if you're doing your very first session, if you have a recording and a chart of anything, I suggest putting some headphones on and playing along with the recording. And do that a couple times to get used to what that feels like because it's a whole different world. Till next time, kids, take it easy.